Today, we're going to learn how to create this fully controllable counter in Effect House. Now, before we jump into Effect House, we'll want to create our numbers. So I'm just using Affinity Designer. You can use whatever you want. And I've created a document here that is 768 pixels wide by 1024 tall. Now, you'll need to remember this number, or at least this ratio later on when we get to Effect House. So I've just created my numbers, each one on a layer, and I've exported them separately. So here I have the number nine. On a different layer, I have the number eight, and so on and so forth. So once you've created your numbers, export them as PNG images. So you have a transparent background, and let's jump into Effect House. All right, so I'm here in Effect House in a new project. And as of version 1.6.1, you cannot add text. So if you have some sort of game where you have like a score or maybe you have a countdown, uh, you don't have any way to add text to show that score or countdown to the user. And so that's where our images are going to come in. So first we're going to click on add asset, import and from computer, and then go ahead and import all of those images. All right, so I have my images here and now let's get a place to display them uh, somewhere in the screen. Now this works with both a 2D image on the canvas or by applying our images as a material to a plane. Uh, I like the um, plane option just because we can track it to say the user's face. Uh, so let's add some AR tracking. We want the head tracker. And then inside of that, we're going to create an empty object to kind of keep everything together. So we'll have our head tracker selected. Let's add an empty. And I'm going to rename this to number holder. Don't type too fast. Effect house is still a little rough around the edges. All right, and now inside of here, I'm going to add two planes. So I'm going to come back to add object. And inside of 3D, I want to add a plane. So I'm going to start with just one, kind of get things positioned. Uh, so you might not see anything, um, at least here in this front part. That's just because our number holder is hidden. And let me make sure it's nested under the head tracker. And then I'll put my plane under the number holder. And we're going to keep this all nice and organized. All right, so we got that. I'm going to grab my number holder and move it out so we can see it. Maybe let's move it up to the user's forehead. Okay, so I'm going to do a double digit counter. So I want to move this over to the left uh, of center and I'm gonna adjust the scale. So my image dimensions are 768 by 1024. And so my width is three quarters, 0.75 of my height. So I'm just gonna scale that and let's move it over just a little bit more, keep it more or less centered. And I'm gonna call this plane, I'm gonna rename it the tens spot. Let's see if this will let me rename. There you go, tens spot. And then I'm going to duplicate it. I'll call this one the ones spot. I'm going to move this one over just over right next to it. All right, so we have our two numbers here and we can move them both by moving this number holder around. So we can move it to different parts of the head or wherever we want to track it. All right, so now that we have our planes, uh, we need to give them some materials. So I'm going to add an asset down here, choose a material. I want an unlit material. And then once that's added, we're going to rename this for the tens. And then we're gonna, after we set it up, we'll duplicate it for the ones. All right, so I have my material. Now let's turn texture on. And let's go ahead and just grab our number zero just for our kind of placeholder. Oh, it went off screen. Grab your number zero. And for render state, you want to open that up. And you want to change blend mode to transparent. 
and then select your 10 spot plane and let's set the material to our 10's material. All right, so there we go. There's our first number. Now we can just duplicate this material and we'll use this for the ones. All right, so now we are going to use some of the visual scripting, uh, that node scripting to get this all set up. So on each of my materials, I'm gonna select them and on texture, I'm gonna click on this little circle and I'm gonna choose set texture. And that should open up the visual scripting and give me this little texture thing here. And then I wanna do the same thing on the ones. So I'm gonna select that one. I'll go texture and set texture. All right now it's not updating the name. So this still says unlit. This one still says tens parentheses one. Um, so just try to keep track of what the names are until that bug gets fixed by um, the effect house team. All right. So we're going to use these nodes to set the texture based off of an input. So we are going to kind of work backwards from here. We're going to start by adding what connects to this texture node. So I'm going to right click or sometimes it's a little slow. So you can come up here and click this plus button and we're going to search for select. So you're going to grab that. And this lets us choose different inputs. So I want to click on this number here. I'm going to open that up and I want to change this to a texture 2D. Then I want to add enough slots for all of my numbers. So I have zero through nine. So I can just click on this plus button and add more and more uh, texture slots. All right, so once I've added those, I want to go through and add my numbers. So uh, this is going to work off of a zero based index. So you want to make sure that um, your image for number zero is the first one. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to choose, uh, that'll bring up the little selection, keeps bringing it off screen for me. Uh, so I'm going to choose zero. And then I'm just going to go down the list and choose each image for each spot. All right, so you can see here, I have my numbers zero through nine, all in this uh, select node. So I'm going to connect this to this value on this first uh, set texture node, then I'm going to select this um, select node, do control C, control V to copy and paste that. I'm going to connect that one down to this other one. All right, so we can send in a number to now choose which image gets displayed. Uh, so how are we going to do that? Now uh, let's start off by creating a number source. So I'm going to create a counter. So I'll add this in. And I'll search for counter. Let's add that. And let's go ahead and just add a screen tap node for increasing that number. So let's slide over a little bit. So we need some space. And let's add a screen tap and connect that to this increase. And now you also want to change this to, this is kind of the maximum we can go to. Uh, so let's take that up to 99 uh, because we have a two digit counter here. And then a step of one, we're just gonna count by ones. All right, so we have our counter. So now we're gonna to need to get our number and figure out our ones digits and our tens digit. So I'm just gonna pull out this number and I'm going to look for the mod node. So this is the modulo operator. So what this does is it gives you the remainder. So if we take five divided by two, it's the answer is 2.5. But if we're just talking about integers, five divided by two is two with the remainder of one. And so this mod will give you just that remainder. So if we divide this by 10, this is going to give us our one spot. So let's actually connect this up and see this in action. So this will be our index here. And then we also need our kind of updates going on. So I'm going to take this um, green arrow on the counter, 
connect it over here to this texture. So each time there's a tap, we will update the number and then update our number over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it a try. So if I tap, we go up to one, two, three, four, five, and I can tap all the way up. I'll get to nine. And now if I tap one more time, that'll reset back to zero and they'll start counting over again. So that's really easy for our one spot. Uh, but now our 10 spot, it's gonna be a little trickier, but not too hard. Uh, so while we're here, let's go ahead and connect this event here so we get that updating. If you don't connect this green thing, um, that's the trigger for when to set the texture. Uh, so make sure you have that. And you might have noticed that we kind of lost that connection. You can only connect it to one thing at a time. So pull it out and you want to search for a sequence. Now we can chain those other ones together. Um, I just like to have the little sequence here. So let's just connect those. So it'll connect, so it'll update both of those numbers each time there's a tap. All right, uh, effect house is a little laggy. Uh, let's move that just out of the way. And now let's figure out how to get our 10 spot. Uh, so since we did the modulo um, operator and we got the one spot, why don't we just divide this by 10? So let's pull that node out and we'll search for uh, divide. So we'll divide this by 10 and then we'll do the modulo. And then that should give us the tens, you would think. Hint, hint. All right, so we have that connected. Oh, let's set our modulo to 10 because we're counting base 10. Now let's give this a try. So let it reset, all right, so I'll tap, I'll get one, two, three, four, five. Oh, but now you see we've advanced here. And the reason why that went up already is because it is rounding. So it's kind of working, uh, but not quite. So what we actually need to do is before divide is we're gonna subtract our ones place. So this first modulo is already giving us that ones value. So we're just gonna subtract it from here and then divide it to get our 10 spot. So I'm gonna drag out from here and choose subtract. And we will connect our one spot over here. And then we'll hook this up into our divide. So if we have, say, the number 16, if we just divide that um, by 10 and round it, we're gonna end up with a, uh, it might get rounded up to like a two. But instead, if we subtract that uh, six first, then we just have 10 divided by 10, that's just one 10. So now if we start tapping, we can go through our numbers and we'll get to five. You see, we stay at zero here, six, seven, eight, nine, and now 10. And then we can keep on tapping and we can go on up to 20. You can see that we don't jump places until we've clicked that number of times. And so uh, since this is all controlled by just kind of what number is going into here, um, you can uh, add some event to decrease this number. You can reset it. Uh, you can use some other value and you can set this number dynamically. So it looks like we have um, some text here, but really uh, it's just two images and we're just doing a little bit of math to figure out which digit to show. Now, if you wanted to add like a decimal place, you can also do that. Um, you would just need to add an extra image. And then to get the decimal place, uh, you just kind of do like an extra step on top of this. You'd multiply it by 10 to turn the decimal, the first decimal place into just like a digit. And then you can do the modulo thing. You can do the subtraction divide by 10 to get the next one and so on and so forth. Uh, some of the math will change a little bit, um, but it's the same process. You just kind of start in one spot, um, get that correct digit, then move on to the next one and so on and so forth. Uh, it's a little beyond the scope of this tutorial. I want to keep it a little shorter, but it is possible uh, just a little more math.